I just realized I forgot to test fit this whole piece and the thing that it goes in. Ah, crap. <sighs> well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and spot in that piece back there and then we'll test fit it. That's making me nervous. There's a little burr in there that it's hitting on, on the bottom, so I can't get it straight, but it fits. So we are good to go. Yay! All right, now let's get back to welding it. I did try getting some arc shots with this camera I'm using right now, but I just couldn't get it. So, uh, sorry for that. Um, I'm no longer using my good DSLR camera because it's only 720 quality. I've been making my videos in 1080. So you're not going to see any nice arc shots in this video. Apologize for that. This is just the first pass. I'm going to do probably three passes on all of them total. We'll see how they go. But first pass in there. Those corner welds came out really nice. Filled in this. There was a gap in there. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to do another pass on that. That really filled in there. I probably will just because I can, you know, overkill. Uh, let's see, move you around here just a little bit. I was a little cold out here, so bumped up the voltage and the wire speed just a little bit. And as you can see, it's really cutting down in there now. I like that a lot better. Um, these I just filled full. And then I could come back with a couple passes there. And maybe, I don't know if I'll tie in here with another pass actually because I want the force to come into this ear and back, not up to here. So I'll probably leave that. Um, so yeah, anyway, just quick overview of the first pass. And I have to say it's getting a little chilly in the shop. I got the windows open, you know, fresh air, but it must not be much up over 35 yet because it's, that air is cold coming in. It says 52 for in here. Uh, a little I had to clean up those ends. Already did it on this one. And now I've got to do it on this one. I'm actually going to use these rods as the pins, I think, since, you know, these hydraulic rods are hardened on the outside. They're hardened chrome rods. I think it'll be a really good choice for this, I'm hoping. I got some bits and bobs I'm going to stick on this rod and try to tighten that thing up and see if I can't pull them ears a little bit because that bottom ear goes into the reduced section of the shaft here. So, part it off a little bit see if I can pull that ear. Before we continue on this, I gotta open this package. I'm excited. <clears throat> it's something I should have bought years ago. I wanted to buy years ago. <laughs> I hope it works. It's used, but uh, I think it'll be just fine for me. A lot cheaper that way and if I destroy the thing then hey I'm out of a lot less money so I'm ready to see if this dang thing works those things are tiny good grief no wonder people like them kind of excited to see what the quality's like now maybe I can film my uh, craning the hitch back on this plow when I get 
back to that point. Sweet! So at this point, it's been a couple weeks and the weather has not allowed me to finish this project outside. So I was looking the plow over and I realized that if I take some of the wings off and actually get it here in the shop, I need to take these wings off anyway because I got to repair some of these hinges. As you can see here, they're just completely wore out in there. So that's what I'm going to do. The middle three sections will fit in here and there are seven sections total on this plow. So once I get it here in the shop and you see just three sections, you can only imagine how big this thing is when all seven are on. So these are the mounts for the hitch, the tongue of the hitch, I guess, I don't know how you word that exactly. My lexicon fails me at the moment. Uh, going around, seeing if they grease, this one greased. Grease circ works. Shot a whole bunch of junk out of the grease circ in that hole, but clean that all out, it works. So I'm giving it a couple squirts. I'm gonna turn it around here, kind of work it in, that kind of thing. Make sure the grease is all the way around it and clear up and down the sleeve and kind of going overboard with it here. But there we go. Now we get all the way around. Get a good cover all the way around on it that way. And that's what I want. I'm gonna put a couple squirts in there. This doesn't move, the bolt does not pivot inside of this bushing. But if you ever got to take it apart in the future, I'm just going to go around and do the other three just like that. Replace the grease circs if necessary and use them if they'll work. So this is the pin I'm going to use to put the hitch on back there at the point where it goes in the plow, right there. I just drilled an inch and a half hole in a piece of strap iron. I ground a groove in the hard chrome rod right above the strap iron so that weld actually goes into that groove a little bit, make it a little stronger. Um, Pretty happy with them welds. I used a 114 rod. I debated about using a stainless rod, but I got to thinking about it. I was like, nah, this, this 1045 steel will be just fine with a 100 series rod. Uh, it's a little cheaper than stainless rod.
I just don't think it shows up well on camera because you know you can't get a scale of things but that hitch is way lower than it used to be way lower man this is a completely different plow now all right well I'm gonna tighten up all them bolts you don't care about that so I won't film that I'll give her a coat of paint here and there and that means the hitch is on it